is he out there growing the business, making things happen, but he actually understands what's going on financially and financially in the business, which is important. Same kind of discussion too with a spouse. You know, the, uh, the spouse wants to know that not only are you running a good business, but you know what's going on financially. Now, the key to being able to answer that question, and it only take 10 minutes of your time each month, is we've got to simplify, right? And as, so I'm not going to try to turn you into an accountant in this session. What I want to do is help you to simplify the process of understanding and managing cash flow. So we're going to simplify the work that you have to do in order to get to that answer. I want to simplify the work that, say, you know, your staff or an accountant or a controller, depending on the size of your business, has to do. And then we're going to simplify basically the big picture view and understanding of cash flow. Because when you know what's going on with the cash, you know what's going on with revenues. It means you know what's going on with expenses. You know what's going on with accounts receivable and inventory and everything else. So the real key here, and this is where a lot of accountants and CPAs miss the boat, is it's all about simplifying the financial side of the business and specifically simplifying how we go about understanding and managing cash flow. So here's where, you know, Mickey said you need to have a, a, a pen and paper handy. Here's the first one. You need to, whenever we're done with this session, I want you to go pull out your P&L or your income statement for last month. Write down what your profit was, the, the quote bottom line on an income statement or profit and loss statement. Write that number down. Take a look at the balance sheet or your cash balance. Write down what the change is. In other words, so if we're looking at March, we had an ending balance in February. Let's just say it was it was fifty thousand dollars of cash. At the end of March, it's forty five thousand dollars in cash, meaning cash went down by five thousand dollars. So what I want you to do is take a quick look, write down the profit number, write down the change in cash. And then your challenge is to answer that question, what happened to the cash? Why is there a difference between profit and the change in cash for the month? So in this example that I'm showing you on the screen, they had a, a profit for the month of about $20,000, but cash went down by $4,000. So the question is, why? And can you answer that? Here's another explanation uh, or a, a, an example where they actually profit in this case was a loss of minus $12,000. But the cash went up by $25,000. So the question there is how do we have a loss of $12,000 but we actually have more cash at the end of the month as a result? Your challenge and what I'm going to show you how to do here is to answer why that happened. And then just for fun, I want to show you that I'm going to teach you a, a process in something I call the cash flow focus report. And I'm going to also show you that not only can you do that for your business, whether your business is small, medium, or large, but I also took Apple computers results for 2012 and put it in the same format because I want to show you that you can simplify cash flow, get a big picture view of what's going on with the cash in a business, even if it's a huge company like Apple. Okay, so now this is what happens, you know, especially in the small business world. You're wearing all the hats, you're doing everything, and then most business owners kind of get this, you know, my brain's about to explode kind of feeling whenever they're thinking about the invoices and the bills that have to be taken care of and the financial statements and all the information that it takes to manage the financial side of the business. And what it ends up creating in a lot of people is they're trying to do everything themselves. And it creates this struggle, which leads to a distraction. And it's that struggle and distraction that really is where people get off track in their business. That's where lack of good, solid financial systems, lack of good, solid monthly financial statements leads to this, I don't know what's going on. I can't make good decisions about uh, revenue. I can't make good decisions about knowing where to be, collect money. I can't make good decisions about uh, expenses relative to budget and plan, how to improve my financial position because of that struggle and distraction. And, and if you let that go too far, it leads to failure. And failure really hurts. And the reason I like to bring this up is that 
in the small business world, you know, most people come into or, or, or create a business, especially if it's a smaller business, you know, with the intent of creating, you know, something that's theirs. They want to experience the pride of ownership. They want to have more control over their life and how you spend your time. Uh, they got tired of having a boss breathing down their neck in the corporate world. They wanted to have the ability to go out, make something happen create their own income based on their own results. But what happens when people get caught up in neglecting the financial side of the business, neglecting the cash flow and understanding what's going on with the cash flow, it, that struggle and distraction leads to failure and failure really hurts. And just so that we're all on the same page here, the definition of failure in business is running out of cash. And that could mean that literally speaking that there's zero in the bank account but we got all these bills and so the business is toast the business is done or it also could mean there's a hundred thousand dollars in the bank but we've got it but we owe two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to a lender over here and they're calling the note either way it spells ruin for the business and then everything you've worked so hard for <laughs> goes right down the toilet so, and the reason, I tell you, I mentioned this for a couple of different reasons. One, obviously failure is no laughing matter, but there's a lot of people, because I, I take some criticism because I'm focused so much on the financial side of the business, understanding cash flow, that it kind of feels greedy to some people that, hey, I'm in business not just a, for, for the purpose of making money. I have a larger goal here. I have a more worthy, noble goal here. But what I like to point out is that if the cash ever runs out, all of the things that drove you to create the business and the noble intent and, no, and noble purpose, they all go down the toilet as well. So there really is no option. doesn't matter if your goal is to make a lot of money or if it's just to provide a valuable service. You have to pay attention to the financial side. You have to pay attention to the cash in order to, to create your vision for the company and ensure that it's a dream and not a nightmare. So now, I know from my own experience, 30 years as, as an accountant, CPA, that most business owners don't really understand what's going on with the cash flow. So when I wrote the book, Never Run Out of Cash, I decided, like a good accountant, I would put some numbers to it. So I asked the question, do you feel like you have your cash flow under control? 82% said no. That's a big number. The other question, and this is very revealing right here, and that is, I said, do you know what your cash balance will likely be six months from now? The answer to that was 79% said no. And so one thing I want to point out, and this is very, uh, this is an in insightful view into how to manage the financial side of your business. If you don't know where your cash is going, basically, or if you don't know what your cash balance is likely to be over at least the next six months, it's almost impossible to feel like you're in control of the cash because everybody's got these questions going on in their head. You know, am I going to have enough money to meet the debt service payment three months from now or a balloon note that's coming up? And I need to hire somebody because I really need someone to help on the sales side. But what if I do that, what's going to happen to the cash? So it creates this disconnect in their brain around where the cash is going. So that's just make a mental note of that because I talk about this extensively in my book, Never Run Out of Cash, about cash flow projections, the importance of projection so that you know what your cash balance is likely to be over at least the next six months. Okay, so now what I want to do is, you know, as a CPA community, and I can say this because I've been a part of the community for a long time, we've done a incredibly poor job of helping business owners really understand what's going on with the cash because we kind of get into this, especially in public accounting, kind of get into this rhythm or um, habit of taking some financial statements if we're helping a, a client create them and just plop them on them and say there you go here's your financials or here's a tax return and then boom you know right off in the wind so it's, so there's and, and then the discussion that does go on sounds a whole lot like accountant speak or blah 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 to the business owner and so they end up coming away confused and frustrated because they know they're not getting what they really need 
to understand what's going on with the business. They know they're not getting what they need in a way that's simple and easy to understand. Right, and so that's our goal here is to make cash flow simple and easy to understand. So we're gonna, what we want to do is come away looking like this, so that as the entrepreneur, you kind of come away thinking you found a new superpower. I call it the common sense superpower because when you understand what's going on with the cash, I'm telling you, running the business is going to be a whole lot easier, and you're going to sleep a whole lot better. Now, there's a couple reasons why. So you know, 82 percent of business owners don't really feel like they have the cash flow under control. One of the reasons is this right here. It's a accrual basis accounting is what creates the profit or loss statement. But it but profit or loss does not equal cash flow. Even in a cash basis uh, P and L or income statement, I, I usually use I use those words interchangeably. P and L or profit and loss statement with an income statement. I use those interchangeably here. People tend to think if I see a profit on the bottom line of that P&L, that must mean I'm making money, which must mean I have more cash flow. Okay, but it does not work that way. And the other thing that's a challenge is that you could like this is an example of a statement of cash flows, and this is coming out of QuickBooks for this particular example. But the same thing if you're using zero or uh, uh, or any other accounting system, if you're going to print a statement of cash flows. It shows basically here's net income and it does this reconciliation negative this plus that negative this plus that and it's usually, this is actually a short one. Many of them are going to have a full page or two worth of these changes and what happens is there's no way that as a business owner you can kind of get your head wrapped around 25 different changes because then it really you really got to get in the weeds about understanding accounting to do that. And it, there's actually a whole lot of accountants <laughs> by the way that really don't understand this. And then th this is just an example I like to point out that in this particular case you see well there's a negative adjustment of $6600 and it relates to accounts receivable. There's nothing on the surface of this report to let you know whether that's good or bad because that could well be a good thing. It could also be a bad thing. So it doesn't, the statement of cash flows, well, it's a good report, but it's, um, and I'm going to show you, we're going to take some information from that report and turn it into something that we can actually use. So this is, this, this view right here kind of gives you a flavor for the number of different moving parts that relate to cash flow and why it's so important that we simplify this because Profit or loss is a component of cash flow, but so is receivable. So if you sell, if you got a $10,000 invoice to a client, you send it out there, that's, that creates sales or revenues. But if you don't collect that receivable in the same month, then you have a difference. It's not until that receivable turns, gets paid that it turns into cash. And then similarly with inventory, if you're buying inventory and you have to say bring it into a retail store, you may not sell that for one, two, three, four months out, and that's the point at which the the money is going to come back in. So the money is going out to buy it in one month. Months later, it's coming back in cash in the in the form of having been converted into sales. Accounts payable and credit card uh, payments, things like that, are very similar in that you might get a bill from a vendor in one month, but it doesn't mean you're going to pay it. it doesn't mean the cash is going to leave the door in the same period. And a capital expenditure would be, say, you bought a $30,000 vehicle or a $150,000 piece of property or something. That capital expenditure is not going to show up in your expense or your profit and loss in the period in which you buy it. And borrowings and debt service, right? so if you borrow $100,000, that's not income. And if you repay $50,000 on a loan, that's not an expense. All you've done is what you've done is reduce the debt. So there's these number of different components here, which is why we've got to take that and we've got to pull off the accountant hat. So those of us who are working with business owners, pull off the accountant hat. What we got to do is simplify that into something that a business owner can really relate to. And we're going to do that by focusing only on, so each month only focus on the three largest drivers of the cash. Very, 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 very important point. Then we're going to write a one-line description of what that change is. Then the third point then is we're going to we're going to decide if that change is good or bad. And then our goal here, 
is that we want to move from any confusion there might be out there about cash flow on the left here, convert that to understanding. The way we're going to do that is with what I call the cash flow focus report. And so just so you know that I, uh, I'll have a link for you at the end here, and then Mickey will follow this up too. You can download this. I have it in a couple different forms for you. One is as a spreadsheet so that it's a little bit easier to fill in, but and one's as a PDF. But basically, this is designed to pretty much fit on a note card, right? Which means that it uh, helps force us to simplify what, how we're going to display what happened to the cash last month. So let me walk you through real quick an example to show you how this works. So in this case, we got a business, they made $15,000 of profit for the month, but the cash is down by about $3,000. Okay, so the month is over, business owner wants to know what happened to the cash. So we're going to go through the cash flow focus report. Here's step one. We're going to put the beginning cash in here, and in this case, it's $58,000. So notice that I'm, I'm putting this in thousands, and it's part of how we are going to simplify this. We're not going to put $58,235.33. Okay, that's way too anal, way too detailed. That's not what we're trying to get here. We're trying to get the big picture, 20,000 foot view of what happened to the cash. So we're rounding this to the nearest thousand. And then I go ahead and pop in the ending cash balance of minus 55. So that's step one, right? We're, uh, uh, we're going to pull two numbers from the statement of cash flows that you can run from any accounting system for the month, or you can have someone run for you. Step number two is take a look at the three biggest changes in cash. Now this is this is really the heart, kind of the secret here, is that we're only focusing on these three changes. And in this case, there was a big change in accounts receivable, a negative deduction on this cash flow, 23,000. Profit was 16,000, and then payables went up by nine. So now here's the deal. As you go and look at the one-line explanation, of each, how each one of these changed, it forces you to learn a little bit of something about the about the financial statements. The key is that it doesn't it doesn't force you to go learn 15 different things. It's only three. Okay, so it's in beginning to do this. This will take you a couple months to kind of get the hang of it. But this is where you're going to actually learn in kind of bite-sized chunks a little bit about how the financial statements work. So in this particular case, we move to step three, and that is we're going to explain why did why were these the three largest drivers or changes in cash for the month. And I'm going to start with this first one. The, pro, the sales were up nicely. So in this particular business, making sixteen thousand dollars for the month was good. Okay, now if the budget was 50000 it, it wouldn't be so good. But in this case, that's a nice month because uh, this was a seasonally slower month of the year. And the reason sales were up and profit was up is because there were several large orders that shipped to the customer during the month, meaning when they shipped the order, they created the invoice, which turned it into revenue, and a good chunk of that revenue is profit. Now. The change in receivables, meaning the receivables went up for the month, the change was because these two large orders, it's primarily two large orders that shipped and created the nice sales, which created the nice profit, will not be paid until the next month because this customer is on 30-day term. So that this happened to ship late in the month created the revenue, it's in the profit and loss statement, but that money is not going to be collected until next month. And then this 9,000 positive adjustment is because there were some vendor, in, we got some vendor invoices, we recorded them as expenses, which brought our profit down some, but we're not, we got, 30, we have 30 day terms with those vendors. So we're not going to be paying those vendors for another 30 days or so. Now step four, is we want to label what or is each one of these good or bad and recognize that it doesn't matter if it's a negative or a positive it's why it's what created the change is what gives rise to whether that change is good or bad so now with the information here we know we had a good month made some good money 
but part of the reason we had a good month, we had a couple large orders to our vendor who pays in 30 days. So, and we're not, and we won't see that money until next month. That's why our cash, that's why our profit was 16,000 and cash went down from 58 to 55. Now, one other important point to provide here is, because I was, I was having this particular discussion with the business owner. One thing this got them focused on was they said, you know what, I think that tells me what's about to happen to the cash too, because these large orders are going to come in next month, so I should see a nice bump up in cash. And you know what, I'm going to go look at the aging and I'm going to go talk to my person who's in charge of collecting receivables because I want to know that they're going to get those two large invoices paid. I, I don't want the customer sitting out there on my large invoices and not paying me. So it actually created an interesting uh, uh, scenario where now the business owner kind of sees, oh, I understand, yeah, that customer hasn't paid. You know what? I'd like to see that cash come in next month. I'm going to go make sure that it actually does. Okay, so let me, just for fun, I'm going to show you this. Uh, I, I, I said we can go to any size company and use the focus report to answer the question. In this case, for 2012, Apple had a $42 billion profit, but cash only went up by $1 billion. Why? So I filled out the cash flow focus report. In this case, I summarized it in billions, right? Because the purpose here is to keep this simple. So they started with 10 billion in cash, ended with 11 billion. The three largest drivers in cash, net income, $42 billion, which by the way is just incredible. That's 27% of sales, making it all the way down to net income. And that's net income after taxes, which is a beautiful thing. Then $38 billion came out of cash and went into short-term and long-term security. So what happens when you're running a business that uh, almost mints is like a uh, cash printing press, then you have to do something with your cash. And in this case, they invested in short and long-term securities. They have made some purchases of other companies, but none of which rises to the level of being the three largest uses of cash, because the third use was capital expenditures, which is pretty interesting since um, since uh, Apple doesn't do any manufacturing. Uh, that 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 number right there actually got up some interesting discussion in the financial press because it turns out because they only use like one or maybe one billion, maybe two billion related to the retail stores. The rest of that was buying equipment and other things that they put into other people's plants in other countries to try to ensure that they have the capacity. These other vendors, manufacturing vendors, have the capacity to make their product. So just an interesting look at what you can do with the cash flow focus report. So let me take one quick look. Um, well, I'll tell you what, um, Mickey, I've got a couple of things I want to do after questions too, but let's just take a look and see if we got any questions that way we can hit before I uh, cover a couple other points. We haven't had any come through so far, so why don't you just keep going, and then if you guys okay. want to submit another, uh, you can feel free to type in the, the box, the chat box, if you do have a question for Philip, uh, and I'll get those going to you uh, wherever we can, so you can go ahead. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is show you here just real quick at uh, site never run out of cash .com. This is where I, uh, I have an online course that goes through the nitty gritty greasy grimy detail of how to complete the cash flow focus report and um, has workbooks and everything that goes with it. But the reason I bring you here is I want to show you, uh, Mickey had mentioned the blog, uh, which is where I've, um, you know, they had been a follower of the blog, uh, Mickey and Frank had. So um, what I do here is once a week, I provide tips that are focused really on the financial side of the business. Like in this case, this was an article, on, you know, would you live in a house with no windows? And the analogy I was drawing is that, um, you know, not having financial projections in your business, not having a projection of what you expect your cash balance to be six months from now is kind of like uh, living in a house with no windows or it's like driving down the freeway 30 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour uh, without a view through the windshield. You know, so we have to have financial statements because they tell us how we did relative to plan and when we have to link that up with decisions that we need to make in order to produce better financial results. But it's projections that help guide us uh, and become the windshield view 
of where we're going. And then I actually took a look at J.C. Penney's financials because I thought it's a, it's a fascinating turnaround story that they're trying to create there. And so I dropped their numbers in the cash flow focus report, and then I have a blog post here just talking about each of the three largest drivers of cash. But it gives you a good flavor for how the cash flow focus report can work, the kind of value that it can provide for you as you're looking at uh, your own company's performance. Um, and I, I post something there once a week. In this case, there's a book called Why Work Sucks and How to Fix It, which was an interesting discussion about uh, what they refer to, the authors refer to as the results only revolution or the results only work environment. So everything I write about is business related and specifically focused on the accounting and financial side of the business and how to improve that side of the business. So let me hear, let me walk you through just a couple other things real quick. Now, and this is getting a little bit into the weeds, but I just want to show you, a f when, you when you go through and you're completing your cash flow focus report, some of this, you, you're going to, when you lay in those three large drivers, you're going to see some typical items coming up in there. Profit or loss, you'll see, you should see in there regularly uh, because you want profit to be one of the three largest drivers over at least some period of time because without it, you're not going to have a sustainable business. Accounts receivable is going to be in there a lot because at least in accrual basis financial statements, you're going to have revenues in your profit or loss, but the receivables are have not been turned into cash because they're sitting on the balance sheet. I mean, the, the example like we talked about, if you bill someone on the 20th of the month and they've got 30 day terms and you're not going to see that money for another 30 days. Um, and so accounts receivable is a very, 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 very important asset that you need to be all over as a business owner. If you're selling on terms to clients, you must be very involved. In, um, and there's, I'll give you a couple tips. One, one of the measures I really like is DSO or Days Sales Outstanding. If you search on that in my blog, you'll see some, some uh, good posts there that, that'll help you use that as a tool to manage and monitor accounts receivable. Then also, as a business owner, you ought to have that accounts receivable aging handy and be looking at it all the time. And if you've got a, if you've got a problem with some people that aren't paying, you might, just want, you might just have accounting or someone put that in front of you every single day because the accounts receivable aging is where all the nasties are and that's where that's where your focus needs to be to make sure that people are paying on time. Inventory um, is another big one because you're because you're buying pro if you have inventory you're buying product laying the cash out and then it's sitting in inventory or in a store or wherever until it gets sold and converted to cash later. Then some of these payables are the same kind of thing you're gonna get like a credit card if you charge something on a credit card in March, it's becoming an expense in March, but the payment's not going to happen until, say, April, because there's 30-day terms. And then if you're in a growing business, especially, where you're having to buy property or large assets, you're going to have capital expenditures, and that's going to be cash leaving the door that's being recorded as an asset on the balance sheet not in the income statement. So you got to make sure you have good visibility on capital expenditures. And then debt, either borrowing or paying down debt is not something you're going to see in a P&L. That's something that you've got to be aware of and it's going to land on the balance sheet. And then owner investments, distributions, another one. Sometimes people just take money out of the business as the owner. Um, it's not actually compensation. Um, so then they kind of you know they're getting the money but they're not seeing it in the P&L so you got to be very careful about that you got to make sure basically you got to make sure you have good solid accurate financial statements because that's the starting point to ensuring that you can complete the cash flow focus report and make sure you have a good a good handle on exactly what's going on with the cash that's your starting point so a couple of uh, things to, uh, to wrap this piece up with then is that, you know, your goal, what I'd like to ask you to do is to just try the cash flow focus report for, for last month. 
I've got a link here at neverrunoutofcash.com slash kahuna. Go there and you'll get a link. There's a, you can get the spreadsheet version. It's a super skinny, small file, but it uh, gives you, you know, it does a little bit of the math for you. Then uh, I've also got a copy of the PDF slides that we just went through. And then my email, if you have any questions at all, ever want to um, ask me a question, I respond to all my emails and I, I usually do that pretty quick at pcampbell at pdq dot net or seller text is 512-944-3520. And if you get on the blog, there's a sign up um, little screen um, at, uh, at neverrunoutofcash.com and at the blog. If you drop your email in address in there, then you'll automatically get each new post when it comes out. And I only post to that, uh, or I, I post to the blog once a month. So, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, once a week. So uh, I'm not putting something on there, you know, every day, but it's good, solid information uh, uh, devoted specifically to helping you understand, manage cash flow, and to take control of the accounting and financial side of your business. Because when you think about it, you know, if the cash isn't there, if you don't have control of the cash, it doesn't matter if your goal is to make money or not. And I, I'm one of those making money is good and making more money is better kind of people. Uh, so that's why I'm focused there. But it doesn't matter even if your goal is purely even nonprofit. It the the you still have to have a good solid accounting and financial foundation in order to create a successful business. So feel free to contact me and go to that link and grab the information. I'd love to, to help you guys in any way I can. All right, Mickey, i turn it over to you. Okay, that's great, Philip. Thanks so much. We did have a few questions come in, uh, okay. but we're, we're low on time and they're pretty specific. So I think I'll, I'll pass those on to you. Uh, if okay. you submitted a question, I want you to know that we got it and uh, we'll have Philip answer that for you um, so that he can help you uh, with with what you're asking. Um, Philip, I just want to say thanks to you. This was um, excellent content, uh, great stuff. We really appreciate it. Um, and I mean, there's just a lot to learn from this. And just a reminder that we will uh, be sharing the slides. Uh, hopefully you took notes. Uh, so if there's more you need to catch up on later, uh, definitely check out Philip's stuff. Neverrunoutofcash.com. His blog is, is awesome. Uh, lots to learn from it. Uh, I'm going to keep things going and, and tell you a little bit about Kahuna Accounting. So let me just uh, switch over to my screen. And I'm going to keep it real simple to uh, borrow a term from Philip. And uh, I'm not going to go through too many slides, but just share about what we do. And it flows right along with everything Philip just talked about. And I love. Uh, that he explained um, is that you as an entrepreneur your goal is not you don't like to just think about profits and cash flow uh, you have a purpose you have people that you want to serve um, and that's what you're in it for but like Philip said uh, without cash uh, you can't do that and so um, at Kahuna Accounting our passion and our service uh, is to provide outsourced bookkeeping and accounting and to to serve people uh, entrepreneurs who, who that's not their passion so that they can focus on what they love doing um, I, I read a quote recently that fits really well with everything Philip said uh, it's from Jim Collins in the book good to great uh, and he said indeed in a truly great company profits and cash flow become like blood and water to a healthy body they're absolutely essential for life, but they are not the very point of life. And I know that probably resonates with, with a lot of you entrepreneurs, is that the cash flow is not the point, but, but you need it, and, and you have to have it to survive, uh, just like blood and water. Uh, but there's a, there's a big problem uh, that I know a lot of you run into, and it's that as a business owner with accounting, it's very easy to get stuck. And at Kahuna, that's what we've seen a lot of, and that's what we've helped a lot of people with. And that's because everything Philip just explained, I know you agree with and you understand uh, and, and you want that 
in your business, that ability to understand your cash flow, to explain it quickly. Um, the only problem is you think, number one, how do I have time to keep up with all of that? Um, and number two, how do I get the help I need uh, to help me do it? Because I don't have time to to do accounting all, all day long, and I can't afford to have someone else do it. And so when you look at our screen here, you can see that it says accounting done with you. And we, we came up with that because I think there's a lot of people who are stuck between doing it themselves, and so when you do it yourselves, most entrepreneurs, they want to do everything themselves, do it all. And so you get started, and you get your QuickBooks, and you're off on your way, and you try to keep track of your books, and you try to do just enough to get by so that you can submit the information to your EPA and so they can complete your taxes. Um, but everything just, Phil just explained is difficult, knowing where your cash is, knowing what's happening, keeping on top of it understanding what you're doing, understanding that uh, it's right, uh, becomes very, very difficult. But then the other side of it is done for you and getting someone to do it for you, hiring someone or getting that CPA to constantly be working with you to make sure everything goes right, that can be really, really expensive. And it's, it's hard to make that commitment and that, and that jump. And so people are stuck. I, I can't do it all myself. Uh, but I can't afford to take that leap. And, and so that's why we have developed Kahuna Accounting is to help those people to grow with the business owner, providing them services uh, to meet their needs. And I'll just tell you a quick story of how Kahuna Accounting started, and it'll help you understand uh, how we work and what we've done with, with the people we've worked with. Um, Kahuna has been around for 19 years. We're trying hard to uh, get to the – the next year, so we can say a 20-year company, uh, but started in the ATM business, uh, grew fast, grew um, well as a company, and in that growth, uh, our CEO, Frank, um, ran into challenges of accounting. It got to the point where there, he was making a lot of money, and everything Philip Campbell just described uh, became a huge challenge for him. He didn't know, he couldn't communicate with banks. Uh, he couldn't uh, explain quickly his financial position, and he knew he needed to take the next step up to to bring on an accounting staff, but for several months was stuck because he didn't have the ability to make the investment to get that team. Finally, he hired a CFO and turned into a full accounting staff, and that accounting staff uh, – was a game changer for his business. He was able to finally see where the business stood, um, and and it helped him to make decisions, helped him to um, look forward rather than always looking backwards with financials. Um, and so realizing that, Kuna has evolved over the years in out of the ATM business and into uh, business development and building other companies, providing uh, services to help businesses grow. So entrepreneurs can focus on those things they're passionate about, um, while the things that, like accounting that they're not uh, can be taken care of. And so just this past year um, at Kahuna, we thought, what if we took the phenomenal accounting team that we have uh, and make it available for any entrepreneur, no matter what size they are, no matter how small they are, that they could work with us. And so that's what we've done, and we've uh, been serving clients all over the United States with Kahuna Accounting, and the way we do it, I won't get into details because the reality is it's different for everyone. Uh, some people uh, just need to get set up in an in accounting system. Um, I know a lot of people get QuickBooks, a lot of people get an accounting system, uh, but never get properly set up or don't know if they're doing it right, uh, and so sometimes we help people do that, uh, but some people need that full service bookkeeping team uh, and we can do that for you as well. And so the way we do it uh, is with Zero. Philip mentioned Zero. It's a cloud-based accounting product um, which is hugely efficient. It allows us to, the word we use all the time is collaborative. We can collaborate with you. Um, going back to what I said at the beginning, when you're stuck, 
we have the done with you approach. And so whether you just need help getting set up and making sure you're doing it right, uh, we can grow with you to the point where uh, we can take some of that off your plate so that you know your cash is, know where your finances are, know that it's right, can communicate well with your bank and your CPA, um, and all the while not spending all your time focused on accounting, but can focus on uh, the things you care about most. Um, what I would suggest, I want to share with you, here's our team. We got your back. So this is the accounting team that um, Una has developed. Uh, this is the leadership team. And uh, we found that a lot of people just feel alone with their accounting. And getting help means more than having someone that can do taxes for you. It's, it's what Philip described. It's, it's the word simplify. Like you said, to keep it simple, to know day to day, week to week, month to month, where you stand, and you shouldn't feel alone. You should have help. Uh, we can help, and uh, with the cloud, we can do it in a way uh, that's very, very simple. Um, and so we collaborate with you, and this is our pricing table. What I would suggest is to just check this out, and what I'd love for you to do is to um, contact us because th there's a lot of people in here, and they're in all different places, and so – the only way for us to know if if we're a good fit or if we can serve you uh, is for you to is for us to get to know you, get to know where you stand, uh, where you're at, um, what your specific goals are, and and see if we can work together uh, because you know we work with people at all different phases of business, um, and so we'd love to hear from you. We'd love for you to to reach out. And the last thing I'll mention is that I know what's going through your head is that um, I can't change. You know, it, it's this makes sense. This sounds good. I, I need help. I need collaboration. I need uh, experts uh, that, can, that can help me with my books. Um, but the, the difficulty of changing uh, is too much. It's too difficult. Um, it, it's too time-consuming. And it's not worth it. I'll just, what I have is not the best, but I'll just stick with it um, and, you know, make it work for me. I want to encourage you that getting changed is not that hard. And to have a long-term focus, not a short-term focus, um, this is what we pride ourselves in, is for making accounting and bookkeeping simple for small businesses. Um, so the stats that Philip said, 82%, that don't know what's happening to their cash, that's something we're trying to help. Our goal is to make it simple, and we want people to be able to answer those questions with confidence, uh, and we can do that for you um, and for all types of small businesses. And so don't let fear of change um, keep you from having that um, knowledge that you need to have a business that's going to be strong and sustainable uh, and it's going to last for a long time. Uh, that's what we're extremely passionate about. That's what we're providing for people. Um, and so I could share a lot more details, but uh, like I said, it, it's it's about you. It's about where you are and uh, what you need, and I'd love to talk to you about it. So um, please reach out. I, I'll follow up after this because I want to share with you all the stuff that Philip has because that in itself is – hugely valuable. Um, everything he says uh, is worth a lot. And so I'll be following up uh, with with more information, but uh, please go to kahunaaccounting.com if you have any questions at all. Um, there's, a, there's a good chance that we could make your accounting process much, much simpler and give you um, a team that has your back and that communicates with you and helps you make sure um, that you know where you stand each and every month. Uh, so I, I want to thank you all for sticking around, uh, for not just leaving right when Philip left. <laughs> he, uh, he's a great guy, and we're thankful that he came. And we're thankful that you all joined us for this webinar. Uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. It was a lot of fun. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, my email is mickey at kahunaaccounting.com, and you will, you'll hear from me soon uh, following up with more details on what Kuna can do and uh, the different 
things Philip has available, his books and his courses and, and everything. So uh, thank you again for joining. It's been a lot of fun, and I uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks.